I just cannot get this Mark II Golf to run right. No matter what I do, it keeps bogging down and it seems like it's a vacuum leak, but I've yet I haven't actually found one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the entire inlet system off it and I'm going to try and find out what is going on with it and why it won't run right. Yes, it's been a while since I've been in the garage, to be honest with you. I've had no electricity in here for the last while, getting a few jobs done on the house and getting the garage rewired and all this kind of stuff as well. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is why I'm back at this again now. But uh, fortunately enough, I have lights, thank you, thanks to my trusty electrician who is behind me here at the moment. But, uh, yeah, we're, um, we're, uh, we're getting there again with it now. And uh, so now it's time to get stuck back into the cars and... Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to take the carburetor off this and we're going to take the intake manifold off it. That's not a straightforward job, simply because of the fact that coolant goes through the intake manifold on these as well. So we have to be aware of that fact and we have to take account of it. So uh, I'll bring you in closer and we'll show you what we're going to be doing. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take off the air filter housing. Next, I'm going to disconnect the choke cable, which is this one here. So we'll get them loosened up and then we can get our accelerator cable off and we'll take off our uh, fuel line then as well and we'll block, blank the fuel line. Next, we're going to take the accelerator cable off and it's a bit fiddly. You have to undo this first of all. Get a, another spanner to hold that. So by undoing this, that reveals the cable up here. And you'll see why you need to do that now in a second. Why did I stitch these the last time? And now that allows us to pull the cable out like this. So you just grab the outer sheet and pull it back and it slips out through the notch. And that's it. Now on the other end there is a little uh, circ clip. You undo the circ clip, make sure the spring doesn't go flying and you pull the whole cable out. So at the end here you can see the circ clip has a little shoulder on it. You grab hold of that. And would you look at him there with his hairy hands. Pop it off. And the spring, there's the, there's the circ clip. And now the spring should just slide off the cable, like, or not, and make a liar out of it. Now there we go. Okay. So, now we should be able to take the whole accelerator cable out, and this is what it looks like. And there you have it. So I took the fuel line off there as well now, so that's done, and uh, I will be replacing the fuel lines in this car. They're just showing a little bit of signs of age. So now, lastly, really what we need to do now is disconnect this spade terminal here, which is just an earth. And on the back of the carb is a vacuum line here as well. And we're just going to... Actually, we don't need to take that off because it's disconnected there. So we actually leave that alone. Um, so yeah, so four nuts, one there, one there. And then the two inaccessible little sods at the back, and that'll allow us to lift the carburetor off. And just like that, the carburetor lifts off. I just try and keep the gasket together. Oh, and you have to disconnect your throttle return spring as well. There, that's her. That's her. Now that's the carb off. So uh, yeah, next thing we're going to be doing is having a look down at that. Uh, intake manifold because that my suspicions are that's where our problem actually is so now because this car has a weber carb and not the original pierberg there is an adapter on the bottom um which i'm going to remove as well because there is a car base gasket under here which it's a big rubber block and i did replace it when i changed the carburetor and to be honest with you modern rubber being what it is i do not trust that it's still in good order probably disintegrating as we speak so let's pop this off first and then we can have a look at that and to be honest with you I'll probably keep going to take the intake manifold off anyway because of the fact that we're this far in we may as well but if we find a problem under here then that's going to be kind of the smoking gun that we actually want doing a uh, Weber carb conversion on this car is not the um the, the fix-all solution to your fueling problems on a Mark II Golf, as I was hoping kind of would be. To tell you the truth, the, the Weber Carb has its own set of problems, not the least of which is what I'm trying to chase at the moment. And it's pernickety when the engine's cold. It, to tell you the truth, if it were up to me now and there was a fuel injection system 
off the shelf for this car that wasn't mental money i would actually consider going down that route but unfortunately fuel injection uh, uh kits are mental money and i don't understand the reason why i mean electronics generally aren't expensive to manufacture now by comparison to what they used to be i suppose it's down to supply and demand right this uh stud here needs to unscrew as well so you have two uh, cap head screws there and then this stud actually has a shoulder on it and that keeps it in place as well so there we go so that's that off so what we're looking at here now is the witness mark around the actual uh, base of this to see how well it's sealing and then we're actually going to inspect this as well and see now in actual fact it doesn't look to be in bad order superficially but we'll uh, we'll have a look at that properly when we get it off on the bench and we can actually give everything a proper clean so now you may have noticed uh, the buildup of oily gunge and crap that's down here which um to me is down to a leaking a cam cover gasket so what i might do is actually pick up a new cam cover gasket and fit it as part of this job but for the moment anyway we can actually like we could do that after the fact um actually i'm just thinking i have replaced the cam cover gasket in this not that long ago so it should be all right so maybe that's actually coming from somewhere else so that could be worth investigating but what we'll do is we need to disconnect this is our vacuum line for our brake booster and then this is a coolant line okay so when you open this coolant is going to pour out so beware be aware of that and be ready to catch it okay um the coolant the, as i said the manifold has a coolant jacket in it which keeps the manifold warm and prevents manifold icing which is a problem on these engines and then the uh coolant return is i think there but again i'm not entirely sure so i suppose what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to drain some coolant out of this engine <sighs> that's a pain in the arse now I know the manuals and instructions and all that say that you need to drain down the coolant system, but I just don't see the reason to drain the entire coolant system when we're only dealing with the cylinder head here. So I'm actually only just going to I'm only going to disconnect this hose. I have a bucket underneath there, and there's a space between the steering rack and the gearbox there for the coolant to go down into. It'll make a bit of a mess, but look, it's my garage, so I don't give a shit. Most Jubilee clips have a uh, seven mil hex on them, by the way, for anybody wondering. It wasn't quite the deluge I was expecting, but there you go. So that's that's grand. Bit of coolant out of there, and that's that's her. So now we can worry about the actual manifold itself. Okay, so I was concerned for a little while there that the um, the exhaust manifold had to come off in order to remove the intake manifold, but no, that's not the case. This heat shield does have to come off though. Okay, so there's a bolt, there's a nut there, and there's a bolt here. Okay, so let's start by removing them. And get that uh, piece of uh, broken pipe out of the way. Actually, that one's not broken. Uh, throw it over there. Right. Get uh, get those uh, get those out, and we'll uh, have a look and see what we're dealing with. Oh, that's gonna break. Check it anyway. Uh, right. It's gonna be like that. You absolute bastard. <laughs> That's exactly what I was trying to avoid. And I had it all right until I... Well, until I didn't. Oh, well. Right, so there's two more nuts that need to be undone as well. There's one underneath down here. Uh, something there. Yeah, down the very bottom underneath the exhaust manifold. And there's one at the, at the back. Let's see if we can get the one at the back first of all. This is... This one, not instead. I think it's not. Really. The ball of rust is what it is, I think. <sighs> Folks, I can see have this great ability to make an easy job difficult by putting a piece of tinware or something like that in, in the way with no access holes to it. get a socket on that now it's turning but <sighs> all right so there we go what a pain in the face that was that's the um heat shield and that's where the the warm air uh, takeoff comes from for the uh uh the carburetor as well 
So anyway, that's that out of our way. So now we can have a look at taking off the manifolds, which is what we came here to see in the first instance. So there's one there, one in there. Uh, oh God, that could be fun. Um, right, they're all cap head screws anyway. So let's just start uh, wanging them out and see how we go. Now, when it comes to cap head screws, the most important piece of advice I can give you is this. Get yourself a pick and clean out the head so that the, the Allen key goes all the way in. Because the number one reason people strip these things out is because the Allen key isn't fully home. So what you can do is get it in its position and give it a couple of wraps with a hammer just to get it seated in there. And I can guarantee you, you won't, you're much less likely to have the problem of it stripping out. Jeez, that one's practically, that one's practically loose. Hmm, interesting. And the only thing is, now getting the bloody Allen key out again. Come on. Now, once it's loose, you can use the other end to get it all the way out. It'd be funny if that was the problem, was actually that the manifold was loose. So there's your, there's your manifold bolt. Um, cap head bolt, not cap head screw. Anyway, we're just splitting hairs. All right, so I've got four bolts out now, so... more are there? You would imagine a six. Yeah, there's another one under there. And God, I hope there's not another one under there. <laughs> All right, I'll get that one out there anyway. So, right. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a little bit of coolant pouring out anyway. Um, the what's interesting is the fact that the um, coolant or the 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 bolts are all oily as well. So, I'm wondering, is that pointing at a different problem as well? So I had a bit of a brainwave and I decided to look at the new gasket to see where the bolt holes are. There's uh, six bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so anyway, right, it uh, just goes to show sometimes when you walk away from these things and you come back to them then a few hours later, you, uh, you can think a little bit more clearly. Or not, as the case may be. But anyway, look, we'll get stuck in. So that means there's another two bolts left to come out. And that means then we should be able to get the intake manifold off. Now, there is a... Um, it's a, it's kind of an O-ring rubber grommet kind of thing, which actually takes up the space for the cooling passage that's in the head, uh, where the coolant goes back in. And... Um, well, either the coolant goes out that way or comes back in that way. But one way or another, anyway, it's, it's something we're going to have to sort out. So um, we'll have a look and see what sort of condition that's in. If we have to get a new one, we'll get a new one. I don't intend to rush this job. I prefer to take a bit of time on it and get this right because this car has been driving me, myself and my wife, nuts. Uh, she used to use it as her daily and now she doesn't use it at all. She uses the Toyota in actual fact and then I use either the MG or the Hyundai um so yeah um i suppose first world problems you know yourself but sure look um still want this car to be right you know because we actually both do enjoy driving it when it behaves itself anyway enough enough waffle for me let's get stuck back into this now just uh coming back to this now i noticed that there's actually a um kind of a rod that goes around the back of the manifold here which has another 13 mil bolt on it same crack as the one that's uh, sheared on this side so um I'm hoping it won't put up as much of a fight this time. But we'll douse it in UB40 and get the... Uh, uh, just try and work it back and forth with the breaker bar. And this time I'll go a little bit easier on it. I didn't think I was pushing too much uh, pushing too much on it, but apparently I was. I'm literally just trying to work the bolt loose here without swinging out of it. That's, uh, that's come good there now, so... I'll get, uh, I'll get my 3A drive ratchet on that now and uh, wang it out the rest of the way. Now, just uh, by way of information, um, I actually did go through all of the vacuum hoses and everything for this engine. And I've sprayed, 
I've sprayed card cleaner or whatever around the. Uh, no way, hang on. That's that's off already. It's just uh, I've sprayed card cleaner, a brake cleaner around uh, underneath. That's the piece I'm talking about here. Uh, and uh, I didn't notice any change in revs or anything like that as I did that. So I didn't outrightly find any kind of leaks. But I'm kind of wondering: is is coolant leaking into the uh, into the intake? And if that were the case, uh, is that going to be our problem? Now, how the hell are you meant to get in at that? Um, so, according to this, uh, let's have a look at this gasket again. Yeah, so, it be around that way. And then just to the, I suppose, as we're looking to our left, um, to the right-hand side of the car, on the uh, cooling passage, there's another bolt. And then there's one on that side as well. So, it's just in around there so um we'll see if uh see if my long allen key will get in at that hopefully it will um not much chance of getting a uh, pick in there first but sure we'll hope for the best yeah there we go i've got it it's gonna be great fun trying to get that back in anyway right i'll try and uh I'll try and get it out i'm gonna get the spanner onto the head of the allen key just to get a turn on it I've got this little bugger, so that leaves one left. God almighty, talk about a pain in the face. Grand when the engine's on a bench or something like that, but not so much when you're trying to do it with the engine in the car. So thank you for this, Volkswagen. That's brilliant. I mean, you can do it, but bloody hell. We are, at this moment in time, having an Irish summer very much inflicted upon us. In that it is absolutely lashing rain this past couple of weeks and it's bloody miserable and as a result I'm not getting as much kind of stuff done as I'd like as well. Even though I've been kind of doing stuff out in the garden and all that. But, oh come on. How are you meant to get this bloody thing? The worst thing I could possibly do with these bolts is actually strip them out so I, can't, I have to make sure I don't do that. Because then, if we do, if I do that, we're sunk. It's fortunate that you couldn't call the call any of these bolts particularly tight. Anyway, that's at least it's something. So this is our last one, as can be evident by the fact that the manifold is now loose. Smell it! Smell out of a bloody hell, though. There we go. Oof, da. My God. All right. There is a wire, an electrical connection to this, which is obviously for a man, an electrical manifold heater. I didn't know it had one, to be honest with you. So there you go now. I don't spill coolant all over me. So that's our coolant passage. And that is Gick plugging it up. And I'm pouring coolant all over the engine. Not that it doesn't have it anyway. Let's have a look at the gasket. Oh yeah. Hmm. Questionable, I think, is the word I would use there. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, assess the situation with the manifold, and we get a new one on. What a new. Uh, uh, Jesus wept. Get a new gasket on anyway. Cool and passage in the head is. Very geeky. All right, we keep going. Okay, so uh, I have the uh, the manifold over by the parts washer, as you can see here. I've got new uh, fluid in the parts washer and all that now, so um, should do a reasonable enough job on it. But let's have a look at what's going on here, because um, that, uh, hmm. Well, let's just say it looks like it's been on a bad night on the curry and uh, points. Jesus. 
<laughs> right, <laughs> put that aside. Uh, I think we may need a new O-ring for that for some reason. Um, I'm going to pop this off as well because there's no telling what the solvents in here will do to the uh, the rubber components here. Uh, and while I'm at it, I'm actually going to take out the, um, the heater pad here as well. And we're actually going to bench test that and see if it's actually working. Because if it is working, happy days. If it's not, well, then we're going to need a new one of them as well, aren't we? Now, that was practically only finger tight. Same with that. And same with that. <laughs> right, so there could well have been a leak at the base gasket here as well. I didn't bend that tab down yet. Um, but let's, uh, let's get it off anyway. Let's get that out of our way. And this is looking actually in pretty decent nick, to be honest with you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, yeah. I'd say it's probably okay. Um, we'll put it aside anyway and just leave it up there for the moment. Now let's get that heater element out of our way as well. I'm going to have a look at that and see what's going on too. did it there is an o-ring in there as well okay i was wondering how that was going to have sealed but we'll take that out and uh, give it a give it a clean up and all that as well hmm. very interesting Okay, I want to flush a bit of water through the uh, both the cooling passages and the vacuum lines in this now. Well, not water, uh, cleaning solution. Alright, it's flowing the right direction anyway. Right, clean enough. It's not a show car, folks. Anyway, right, uh, next thing to do is test out the heater and see if that's working. And then we're going to drill out that bolt that I broke in it as well. And then we will order parts because I'm going to need a new one of those uh, uh, grommets because I do not have one, unfortunately. I, if I'd known, any, if I'd known uh, there was one in there, I only found out since I bought that uh, uh, intake manifold gasket, I would have ordered it anyway. But I didn't, so I don't have it. All right, let's give it a go, see what happens. As I said, don't hold out much hope, but... Oh, you absolute bastard. Well, that's staying in there now. <laughs> no way you're drilling an easy out out. Right, to hell with that, we'll manage without that one bolt. Um, next thing to do is we're gonna check the resistance on this uh, heater and see if there is any. Oh, 1.5 ohms, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I'd say that's working. Whether it's getting the supply in the car now is a different matter. That's something else we'll have to look at. But uh, for the moment, um, we can say that that heater definitely works. Now I'm gonna just spruce it up a little bit uh, before we refit it to the manifold. This is Permatex. It's great stuff when you can get the Jays' bottle open, which is rare, to be honest with you. Because once you've opened it once and you put the lid back on, you ain't ever open it again. Not without a fight anyway, that's for sure. So uh, I kind of bust the lid off this one. But anyway, it will do the job nicely to rejuvenate the gasket that was on this uh, heater. So we're going to brush it on and we're going to stick it all back together. 
Okay, so now I suppose we can put this on. Um, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna use the permatex on this. I'm literally just gonna use a bit of the uh, Molly coat. It just it kind of keeps the um, ceiling surface uh, supple and uh, gives it a better better chance of sealing, but without using RTV because uh, shouldn't need RTV in this instance. So now, right, that's that. Uh, here's our locking tabs and we shall give them a little clean and uh, pop them on then. Okay, so back over at the car now, what we're gonna actually do is see if there's any power coming from the wire for the heater to see if, um, if we need to, to look into that end of things. Because like if the, the heater itself seems to be all right, but there's no power going to it, it ain't gonna work, is it? So let's have a quick look and see now. The ignition is on and yeah we're getting 12 volts there okay so so that says uh, so that supply is live so okay that's grand that's all i needed to know okay so where does that leave us now um well at the moment i need to get that uh, that o-ring for the manifold and once i have that then i can go and start refitting everything checking everything as i go the other thing as well i want to do is i want to actually pop the uh, the jets out of the carburetor and give the carburetor just a little bit of a spruce up it hasn't got much mileage on it and uh, to be honest with you i'm not expecting any, na any nastiness in it that being said while it's off the car it would be silly not to look at it so we're gonna we're gonna do that and we're going to get everything buttoned up new gaskets and all that kind of stuff because uh, yeah, I had another look at this gasket here, and um, damn, it ain't looking great now, to be honest with you. So, you want to go in. So, hopefully, that was our problem, folks. We'll find out. So, we're going to keep going at this, and uh, through the miracle of editing, we'll pick up right where we left off. Well, folks, it's a few days later, and uh, I'm kind of in the thick of it here in uh, Enfloat HQ. But I now have the part to uh, progress things with this car. And in the meantime, I also have the uh, rear suspension removed from the MG because I'm uh, replacing all the bushings and that. Uh, not sure which video will come out first. Um, and uh, I'm waiting on a few bits and pieces for this, uh, this Golf here as well. So uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's that and uh, the Beetle is actually outside. Oh, and the uh, ramp is being progressed as well. I actually have the... Uh, uh, the wiring put in for an inverter that's over in the wall there you can probably just see it behind the golf uh, it's a three phase motor on it so I needed to get a uh, single three phase converter basically to run that motor bit of faffing around f with it but uh, we'll get it there and then I kind of have to get the correct position and bolt it onto the bolt it down to the floor so yeah that will make a big difference I kind of wish I had it for doing the MG's work but I'm a very impatient man so the manifold is more or less sorted now. Well, it's completely sorted. All I'm going to do is just uh, is just blow a bit of dust, uh, dust and dirt out of the uh, the inside of it, just to make sure that there's no impurities after finding its way in while it's been off the car. And the uh, new part here is tw twelve euro in postage, and the part was one euro sixty. That's all it is. It's kind of annoying having to buy these things online, but what can you do? Uh, I would have had to go down the route of getting um, uh, getting onto Volkswagen dealership, but that literally goes in there. So uh, yeah, and I have the I have the other uh, the other gasket as well to go on the outside. So what I want to do now is, as I said, blow that out, and then I'm going to clean off the face of the uh, the head where this manifold will go on. So we have a good clean mating surface, and then we'll get this re get this reinstalled. Well, you guys have a better view of this than I do because you can your head is very small and it's on a little swivel. But, uh, yeah, it's a gimbal camera. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so you can see that the faces there are all cleaned up. Now, I didn't go mad on it. The the uh, the ports are all clean, and where the, the actual gasket is going to bond to is clean. When I say I didn't go mad, I didn't go and clean the whole engine, you know. I mean, I cleaned the areas we're actually going to be concerning ourselves with. So, uh, yeah, next thing to do is to get the uh, manifold back on. All right, so... Some people would suggest installing the uh, gasket uh, dry here. Um, others would uh, suggest using um, some more TV or something like that. I'm actually doing neither. The little O-ring that's there, the, the grommet, is actually installed with a bit of Loctite flange sealant. And flange sealant is uh, is different to North TV insofar as it doesn't actually go dry. It stays as it stays kind of tacky. 
and it basically just promotes uh, promotes sealing without um, without kind of degrading any of the rubber. I found it to be very effective. Now, other people may disagree with me on that, but you know, yeah, that's uh, YouTube for you. Uh, anyway, right. So that's uh, that's that there. So now the next thing to do is to get our um, gasket. Um, just get something to open that with. Okay, so here is the uh, gasket, which is going to go on here, and what we're going to do is just drop a couple of bolts in one here and one on the other side, and that's going to just hold uh, hold it in place while we position it on the actual engine. Now, uh, I did notice actually when I was on a forum uh, looking up a, few, a couple of other um, thoughts about uh, this job, and uh, a couple of people were saying that. Uh, the gasket, this gasket here was over overlapping the grommet. It shouldn't do. It's uh, it's supposed to be uh, wider than it and uh, go on the flat face of the manifold, whereas the grommet takes up the the space that it actually sits into. So if it is doing that, I suppose what you need to do is trim the uh, trim the grommet, or sorry, not the grommet, the gasket. I wouldn't have thought it was something you really should have to do, so to speak, but it's just what I've seen people talking about. So now, I'm just try and get a start on these two bolts. Uh, I just realized, by the way, there is actually supposed to be a bracket that goes onto this one that holds on the heat shield. So we'll come back to that in a little while. In the meantime, let's get a couple of the other ones in. So there's another one in underneath here. And this, to be honest with you, could be bit fiddly. I'm thinking what I might do is actually put it on the end of an Allen key and feed it in that way and then we'll see how we go. So yeah, at least I should have some sort of a chance of getting it in this way. Now this Allen key actually might be a bit long, but you know, let's see how we go. Okay, so here's the bolt on an Allen key now, so that should give us an opportunity to just kind of feed the bolt in this way. It's not working for me, folks. I think I'm going to have to rethink my, rethink my strategy. Namely, I think I'm going to have to put the bolts in the holes before I put the manifold on and at least uh, kind of have them in place there because uh, this is going to be very fiddly altogether. Uh, let's, uh, let's do that because, uh, yeah, <sighs> too much faffing around there altogether. Okay. So now... What I'm going to do, as I said, is I'm going to just drop that there. That one can go there. That one can go there. And then I have a long bolt for there and there. Another short one for there with the bracket on it. They, one or two of them might go to fall out, but I'm hoping I'll be able to stop them from falling out easier than it'll actually be to get them into the hole in the first instance, if you follow what I mean. Okay, so that one of the long ones can go here and the other one here. So now that's a full complement of bolts in place. I have my little uh, bracket in place there as well. So that, uh, that should hopefully stay put. Now what you can do is if you ever find you that you need to stick bolts into place while you're trying to put them in, use a little bit of Vaseline or grease to stick them in. May end up having to do that. Now, I'd be like new just climbing through a barbed wire fence here trying to get this into position now. Very important when you're doing this to make sure you have your tongue at the right angle. <laughs> so now let's see if we can just run a couple of these in with the Allen key now. Let's get the general alignment right. This job wouldn't be such a big ordeal if the exhaust manifold wasn't fitted or if you had the engine out on a bench, but because I'm not taking off the exhaust manifold, 
It's a bit of a pain in the face, it has to be said. Just trying to get the, the, the Allen key onto the last of the bolts in here. Where is the little Okay. Right, so the next job I want to do after putting that bloody manifold on, which was a pain in the face, is to give the carb a light clean. It's not particularly filthy or anything like that, but uh, it would be it'd be daft of me not to at least take the uh, take the jets out and just check them, give them a clean um, before I put it back on the car and just check the float bowl and make sure there's no sediment in there. And then what we'll do is we'll bolt it back on and uh, get it back to its base setting and we'll see how we go from there. I'm hoping that it'll be fairly close to the mark and we won't have to do much faffing around with it. Uh, a little bit of a tweak here and there. And uh, and then, yeah, fingers crossed, this sorts all the problems out that we've been having with this car because it's just, it just hasn't been nice to drive. So, you know, this is uh, this is hopefully, like we did find something. We found that, uh, that torn gasket and uh, that, that hopefully was the problem. You can make great headway cleaning a carb with just a can of carb cleaner, brake and clutch cleaner, it's the same stuff. So uh, what, we'll, uh, what we'll do is we'll use this, but I also have the uh, benefits of having a blowgun in here as well, so I will be using that. You don't necessarily have to, I mean, like in fairness, it's, it, it's definitely beneficial if you can, but uh, I know a lot of my viewers wouldn't necessarily have a compressor at home or whatever, so if you don't have a compressor, just use more of the brake cleaners and kind of blow it through as best you can or whatever. If you do have a compressor, use it. All right, we just I'll pull off this vacuum hose for a start anyway. There we go. Right, that's that off. All right. Now this gasket, the, the card base gasket, we're going to want to keep. So I don't have a new one. So we'll uh, what we we'll probably do is use a little bit of Permatex on that or something just to to get it. Uh, Get it back to good shape again, or get it to seal again. So let's leave that there now. And a lot of this dirt will literally just walk off. As I say, I'm not going for surgically clean on this either, but we'll uh, get it as best as we can. All right, I think that looks a bit better now. I actually use my parts washer to be honest with you, but you can use the, again, same situation. If you don't have a parts washer, just use what you have available to you. Stick it in the dishwasher. <laughs> Probably would work and all that, you know. That. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm fairly happy with how clean that is now externally, but uh, obviously internally is where we're really concerning ourselves with. So down in here, there is the, uh, the there are the jets and the, uh, Emulsion tubes. Now I suppose I probably have to take this lad off here first of all. So let's uh, let's just do that. It's just a standoff for the air filter to go onto. Another bugbear of mine with this is the air filter is just far too small for the size of engine. It's a. Uh, I, I swear my ride-on mower actually has a bigger air filter than this uh, this car. And um, yeah, like this is one point six. The ride-on mower is four hundred and fifty cc. So, uh, right, okay, uh, we're going to take out, if you look down in here, there are four screws. Two of them are jets, and the other two, I'm not entirely sure what they are, but we're going to take them out and we're going to have a look at them. I just realised, I hope they're both the bloody same, because I just realised I did not notice where they came from. This one's the one, yeah, this is the one that was on the right. So, let's, uh, let's be mindful of that. I'm just going to make sure that there aren't any blockages in this, first of all. You know what, there actually are. A couple of those little tubes along the side, or uh, holes along the side are actually a bit blocked. So I'm going to blow that out, and I'm going to blow out the passage that it goes down into. And uh, do the same with the other side. And uh, let's see how we uh, see how we go from there. I suppose you could figure out uh, which one is the may uh, or which one is the. It, it's a progressive carburetor, so the one with the choke here, uh, this one is the one that opens first. So if you actually uh, accelerate 
one opens before the second one. So if you uh, if you see it there, so that that's that's your primary choke, and that's your secondary choke. So you're not uh, you're not giving it the, the uh, giving it both barrels, so to speak, when um, when you're uh, uh, just uh, driving gently. But if you open the taps on it, you can kind of feel it in the accelerator actually. Saw a big clump of crap coming out of that one anyway, so I can't have been helping our running issue. They're both 155s anyway, but they're both they, they each uh, of the uh, jets is actually is actually different. So I don't know whether they would actually fit. It would if they would be interchangeable. Like if you could put the wrong one in the wrong place. All right, so that's that. So let's let's have a look now and see which one. Or what these are, so I'll pop this out and have a look. Another jet. I don't know what it's for, but we're going to clean it anyway. I'm not purporting to be an expert here, folks. I'm just purporting to be an enthusiastic amateur. I suppose one of them is the idle jet and the other is the main jet. The idle jets would be the smaller of the two, and then the main jets. Okay, so yeah. So you have idles and mains on both uh, both barrels, from what I can tell. And uh, there's the... Uh, well, anyway, whatever they are, they're all cleaned out now, and that now. So that's, that's, that's all good to go. So now, uh, let's have a look and see. Your mixture adjustment screw is actually this one over here. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to fully unscrew that and take it out and we're just going to have a look at it and see uh, we're going to be adjusting this anyway because the mixture is not right in this car so let's uh, get that out of there and just blow this port out Okay. So I'm gonna pop that all the way in, and then uh, all uh, all the way in, and just see just see to don't stitch it in, okay? And then back it out one and a half turns, and that can be our baseline setting, and we go from there. All right, half one, one and a half. All right, okay, so there we go. So that uh, carburetor, as far as I'm concerned now, is ready to refit to the car. Okay, now it, the, it is the following day and we are ready for reassembly. We uh, can st put a little bit of this flange sealant on. Okay, I'm gonna literally, I'm only talking the slightest amount. I'm not gonna lather it on or anything like that, okay? So it's really just to promote a good seal and that's even enough there now see let me try a little bit more so you see that it's not going to squeeze out the edges or anything like that now at that so what we can do next is put our adapter plate on because this is a weber carburetor obviously if you don't have a weber carb and you have the pierberg carburetor uh, i feel sorry for you but uh, other than that um you won't have the adapter plate to be honest, as far as the Pierberg carburetor is concerned, when it works, it works. I have yet to say the same for the Weber. I'm not entirely sure it's a, it's a good job. As I said earlier on in the video, if a fuel injection kit was available for a reasonable price for this car, I would definitely consider it, but they're stupid money, they really are. And a Mark III fuel injection system, it's not, it's not really practical because there's so much faffing around with it like everything down to the fuel tank has to be changed and you've all the wiring and you've a huge amount of extra work to do it's not to say that i won't do it in the future i might but uh um hang on a second there's a stud uh stud that goes here uh rather than the cap head bolt so that's gonna go there and this goes here 
Um, but yeah, like it might make an interesting project to tell you the truth to put a um, uh, put a, a fuel injection setup from a Mark III onto this car. Okay, now we're going to need to lock two nuts together on that to uh, wind that one down. So now that's the adapter plate on. So the next piece to go on is going to be a, uh, a paper gasket. Now, I'm thinking I might use a little bit of Permatex on the paper gasket actually just to, um, again, promote a bit of adhesion and uh, sealing. I should have a... Yeah, there's another stud here and that, that, that actually came, uh, the nut came off with it. So that's actually going to go onto this corner here. We'll get to that now in a minute. So I brushed a very light coating of Permatex onto the uh, onto that side of the gasket. So we're going to pop that on there now. And then we will be able to put our carburetor on. So that's going to that's gonna help to seal that. And then again, same situation, a little bit of around, just the very outside of it. So it's not going to squeeze into the gas path of the uh, carburetor. Now, yeah, you could argue that a new gasket is the way to go here. And I would I would be absolutely for that argument, but I don't have one. I didn't buy one, so we're going with this. And to be honest with you, it'll be good enough. If you've never used Permatex, it's great for, if you're, if you have a crankcase taken apart, for example, and you need to seal the two halves of the crankcase, this is kind of the stuff you'd use as well. So it's a, uh, it's a good gasket sealing compound, even if, if you don't actually have a gasket and it's, you just need to seal two halves of something together, then this is the, this is the job. So let's, uh, let's get our carburetor on there now. All right. So now, that's looking pretty good there. So the first one I'm gonna get in is the one that actually has the studs that came out with it. So. Uh, and then we'll get the nuts and washers on afterwards on the other ones. All right, I'll get those, uh, get those bolts nipped up, or those nuts nipped up, and I'll bring you back now in a second. All right, those uh, four nuts are all tight there now, so next thing we can do is and pop our spade connector on there to ground it. Um, go there. It's just, a, it's just a bonding lead is all. Um, so now let's have a look and see. Uh, I suppose we could do our accelerator cable next and our choke cable. Now our choke cable is gonna be a bit of a faff because unfortunately the end is a bit frayed now. Um, and we also have this vacuum line here which goes over to the distributor which we need to address too. So there's a bit of, um, there's a bit of jiggery pokery involved here still, but let's, uh, let's get this in first, okay? So the uh, this goes in like this and then we just tighten that up actually no hang on we had to put it in through there first uh which means putting our spring on uh i'm jumping the gun here big time <laughs> yeah i'll put that on first no wait spring goes on afterwards right so that goes through there this goes through here on the other side there, like that. That tightens up. And if you didn't back off this nut here, which I didn't, then your accelerator cable adjustment should stay the same. We will check it, of course, though. So now we'll just do that up there just for the moment. All right. Now, let's, uh, let's nip them all up. And we will uh, we'll see how we're looking. Okay, that's that. Now we tighten this one here. It's a 12, but the 13 did the job. Okay, so our pinch nuts are tight. This one's tight. There is no bolts that goes through the side there. Uh, that is now taken up by the spring and the... Uh, uh, Sir clip that goes on the end. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to give that spring a clean because it's a uh, filthy and Then that's our accelerator cable done All right, so just a little smear of grease on that there same here I'll allow it to slide So and now we need to compress that spring 
and get our circ clip onto it. All right. So that is that. Okay. I'll just press the pedal in the car and you guys can tell me if the action is all right. By which I mean I'm gonna look back in the footage of the camera and we'll have a look and see. Damn it. I can't get in the accelerator cable. We'll check it later. I need to flute around my uh, with my my ramp. I lifted up the, the arms while I was trying to set it up. Uh, okay, uh, that's fine for the moment. We'll check that afterwards. That's all done up. Uh, let's get our choke cable in next. That's this one. Now, as I said, because the end is frayed on this, it's going to be a bit of a pain to get in, but I just have to see how we go. Right, now I'm going to do that screw up there before I do anything else so that it doesn't go anywhere. Right, well, the choke is fully off there now at that. So I'm actually going to tighten that now. All right. I'm going to put our throttle return spring on next. We're looking pretty good here now. Uh, next thing to do is fuel lines. So as I said, I have new uh, fuel hoses to go onto the car and that is definitely a prudent move, especially if you haven't replaced your fuel lines any time recently. So that is exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to replace, uh, replace the fuel lines back as far as, uh, back as far as here actually for the moment. And then I can get the, the other ones done afterwards. But I just want to get the car running at this point in time. I bet you you guys were thinking I had forgotten to put the heat shield on. Well, I did actually. So uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to work around the carburetor and uh, get this on now at this point in time. So uh, yeah, don't forget to put the heat shield back on before you put the carburetor on because now I just end up having to work around the bloody thing. These things happen, folks. Give me a break. For those of you who have been playing along at home or paying attention at the very least, will remember that I actually broke a bolt doing this. So I'm uh, taking this off. And tried getting it out and just broke my uh, easy out in off in it as well so um there that bolt will stay much to my annoyance but look what can i do uh, let's see if we can get that into, into place there. the thing is i have uh, ordered a new uh the the Local motor factors is getting a new alternator belt for me for this as well, actually. So I'm going to be changing that then today too, hopefully. And actually, I must get him to get me some of that fo foil tube too. Uh, I need to get uh, uh, that replaced. Okay, so where we are now is the fuel line is on, the accelerator cable is on, choke cable is on. Uh, now I need to connect up our vacuum hoses and I have to connect up the uh, coolant supply and the brake booster supply. Um, I need to get more clips for the fuel lines, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do them after uh, later on today when I'm doing the alternator belt and uh, just uh, uh, the old one is everything is connected back up. The one from the carb to the swir uh, swirl chamber here is uh, connected, or is replaced anyway, so that's, uh, that's all done there. So now, um, now it's important here that you don't get your coolant hose and your vacuum brake booster hose mixed up because that is going to give you a really bad day if you do that so um yeah the vacuum booster is the one closest to the head and the uh, coolant one is the one uh, kind of underneath the carburetor so uh, yeah really don't get them mixed up because then you're going to end up with your intake full of coolant and yeah bad times all around so this is our Vacuum hose on for the brake booster. Now inspect these as you're going folks because if this is split your engine ain't gonna run right. Okay, that's that one. So now our coolant hose is the next one. Touch that down there. I mean you want to be kind of going out of your way to get the coolant hose onto the uh, brake booster supply because they wouldn't line up really all that well. But you know never underestimate people folks you know I mean there's people out there who would do it readily. So it's kind of worth worth uh, saying. I did not do it before, by the way. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now there we go. That's that's that one there on. And tighten that up as well. Okay. It's not going anywhere. So they're on. Uh, they're both on. Next thing is the vacuum lines. So there's a vacuum takeoff on the back of the carburetor here, which is going to go round to our intake 
and that will go on to our intake. There's a um, there's a thermostatically controlled uh, valve inside the intake, uh, the, the stock air intake, which depending on the air inlet temperature will either take air from down on the uh, at the heat shield, which is why there's a takeoff there, or take it from over here. Uh, from the inner wing so uh, it's worth keeping that in, in place especially if you're having carb icing problems but uh, and that is what we're going to be doing in this instance it'll be kept in place so right so let's see now um next thing to do is there's another vacuum line which will go off to our distributor okay so the last of the vacuum lines then to connect is actually one that I, I don't even know how it got disconnected in this instance to be honest with you but it goes on to the distributor from the little solenoid at the back now the solenoid is not going to exist in uh man or in yeah in manual cars what the solenoid does is actually it uh, takes the uh, vacuum advance out of the equation when you're in neutral so that the engine's not revving its nuts off when there's no load on it and uh, then when you put it back into drive uh, the, it pulls the vacuum advance back in and through mod modifying the vac advance it uh, changes the engine rpm and uh, yeah it's, it's an elegant way of doing it i have to say uh, now uh, we also need to connect up our spade terminal for our little heater jobby down there that's connected now so let's see uh the only thing we need to do is we need to plug that now for the moment because i'm not going to put the air intake on just yet I want to just uh, see how everything's performing before we do that. So I'll just see if this screwdriver will fit down into there. And it does. Yeah, ground. Okay. So that's that plugged now, right? I need to top up our coolant. We will do that now in a minute. It's not going to overheat in the space of time. Uh, we're going to be running it. Um, there is coolant in it anyway, but it's just a, not not the full complement. And I need to get this ramp out of the way. So let me try and get, do that as well. All right, so I'm going to take off my gloves. I'm torn anyway at this stage. Um, and I'm going to crank this over. Now, it's going to take a bit of cranking because it's been ages since this car has run. And because it's got a mechanical fuel pump, I don't know what it is about the Weber carbs, but they just dry out. And as a result, you end up with, uh, you end up having to crank the Jesus out of them to get the fuel up into the carb. So we will uh, we'll do that. Uh, put a bit of choke on. And uh, hopefully it'll start and tick over. And then once we, once we have it at that point, then I can turn it off and get some ventilation going in the garage. So. That started a hell of a lot easier than it usually does. Aside from cranking. So let's just check everything over just quickly and I'll turn it off. Actually sounds really good. Distributor's not clipped down properly. I'll sort that out now in a second. Okay, without the wireless mic on now, uh, I'm going to start it again, and you can have a listen to it starting. And um, yeah, we'll see how uh, see how it's looking. Now that the fuel has gotten up into the carb, it's full choke on now at the moment. So you will uh, let's see. I'm not even going to put any acceleration on it. Oh. <laughs> I'll be asking a bit of it. Flooded. Don't forget the carb still needs to be adjusted. So now that goes there. We'll be able to get our breather connected up and everything as well now. As I was saying earlier on, the air filters are far too small in these engines. I don't know what Volkswagen were thinking. It's fine when it's clean, but when <laughs> when sure as hell it gets dirty and it's gonna happen. It restricts the airflow too much. 
So you're changing the air filter all the time in this. There is a K&M air filter element available for it, which I probably will get at some stage, but it's so bloody expensive. It's like, I think it's like uh, 110 quid for just a filter element. It just strikes me as a bit on the exorbitant side of things. Well, I took it for a spin up and down the road to get a bit of heat into the engine. It's actually running lovely. Um, now, that's on the base setting, so we, do, we obviously need to give it a little bit more of a tweak. But uh, the reason it wouldn't run on a choke is because it actually didn't need the choke. So um, that might be because it's a bit too rich, actually. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually just uh, tweak the carb a little bit. And uh, then I have a uh, gas tester thing that I can stick up the tailpipe. And we'll have a look and see what sort of numbers we're getting out of that as well. But for the moment, anyway, I mean, that is sounding better than it's sounded in a long, long time. Actually, I'd go so far as to say it's better than it sounded, sounding better than it's ever sounded. This is the screwdriver I use for tweaking the carb in this car, and I've always kept this screwdriver in this car, which says a lot, to be honest with you, because of the fact that I could never get the Jesus thing to stay running right. It'd run fine one minute, and then the next minute it'd be falling on its arse again. So until I've actually kind of proven this, I'm not 100% confident yet. But let's, uh, let's just tweak the carb and see how we get on and uh, go from there. Now, I've actually got the radio mic turned off there now, so you can uh, you can hear the engine a bit better and that as well. So what we're going to do is the screw is down here, so we're gonna we're actually gonna wind it out a little bit and see if the revs pick up. And what we're doing is we want to we want to wind it in until it st just starts to fall on its arse, and then wind it back out a half a turn. And that that's it. Uh, that's our, our uh, that's a fairly good set point. So let's see how we go. Yeah, it's just starting to stumble now, okay? So, yeah, it's back out of half a turn. So, give the throttle a flip. Sounded pretty good to me now, to be honest with you. We'll chop up the coolant now in a few minutes as well. It's not overheating or anything like that, so it's all right. But um, you can still see a little bit of a, a little bit of smoke coming up off the manifold and stuff like that. That's just uh, any oils or greases I used on bolts and stuff like that are just burning off a bit. That's all right. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the uh, I'm going to get the gas tester up into the tailpipe and we'll have a look and see how it's looking that way. Okay, so uh, here's a little gas tester thingy here. Okay, so. We basically get this and stick it up the wazzy and have a look and see what our CO readings are. So that's oxygen in the air. So we're looking for a reading of two on this car. So that's basically 2% oxygen in the air. Okay, so it'll modulate a little bit. So we're probably a bit low on that side now. It's 1.5, 1.6. It's not the most accurate thing in the world, but it's it's uh, it gets you fairly close. So let's just give that a little tweak out. Maybe a quarter turn is all we're going to go here. Okay. So there's two, two point two. I prefer to have it between two and three. So if it's sitting at 2.5 there, it goes up as high as 3, I'm happy enough with that. You know what folks, I think that's good enough. I think that's pretty damn good actually, to be honest with you. It's sitting 2.7 there now. So again, you know, you're better off erring on the side of caution and getting it a little bit higher than what it says. So. Because if you have it down too low, you're only going to end up with the engine too lean. You'll, you'll, uh, you need a certain amount of oxygen in the air coming out of the tailpipe. If, if it was at zero, that'd be perfect stoichio stoichiometry or whatever the hell you want to say. But you're never going to achieve that. You know, it not, especially not in a carbureted engine. So uh, you're, you're better off actually uh, having that little bit of oxygen in it so that the engine's running slightly rich. Because what'll happen is the mixture will just lean out too much across the rev range if you have it, uh, if you have it down too low. It's there at 2.9 now, but uh, yeah, let's call it that. I think that's a, I think that's a win. It's sounding good, and uh, 
yeah, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Let's get it out for a drive and see how it performs. All right, let's go for a spin. You can hear the alternator belt squeaking. I, I need to do those belts. So, as I said, I'll be doing that later on. Now we'll go off up the hill here. See how it pulls. I don't think it's going to get much better than this. This is a steep hill I'm going up here. Oh yeah, it's pulling really well. It's driving lovely. Now the real acid test in this instance will actually be when we get stuck in traffic or something like that because that's usually when it started to give trouble not when I was um, uh, kind of on a longer run but you could still feel it bogging down when you tried to accelerate and stuff like that and then you know you'd pull up to a roundabout or something and it'd go to cut out or whatever so we'll be stopping at a junction further up here anyway and we'll see how uh, we'll see how it performs then you know when I actually go to pull away but uh, so far so good I mean it's uh, yeah and it's, a, it's such a lovely little car to drive when it's behaving itself, you know, I mean, that's the thing about it, like. Okay, so we're coming up to the, uh, the stop sign up here. Now, if the engine re uh, returns back to a good idle, then perfect. Not so much as a wobble. Okay, yeah, let's give it the, give it the boot. Z engine in these it's a it's a pokey enough uh, pokey enough engine it's a 1.6 uh, 75 horsepower but it's plenty uh, plenty powerful enough like you know I've pulled a trailer with this and everything as well and it's been uh, it's been grand to be honest with you and um, that's not to say I wouldn't say no to a GTI like or that I would say no to a GTI I, I would love a GTI but uh, but this car does uh, tick a lot of boxes as well it's a good cruiser I think she deserves a wash and a polish now and uh, a bit of a bit more TLC another thing I have to do is to get a get a new switch for the driver's door uh, for the central locking it's um, unfortunately the the, corro the contacts are completely corroded on the one that's in it so I can't really do much with it um, so yeah that's if I can get what I will if not what I might do is try and take the switch apart and solder in some new wires and stuff like that and go down that route but I'd rather not do that I'd rather actually put a, a good serviceable one in but um yeah I mean look we'll, we'll we'll see that's a job for it's a job for another day but uh I might just do a short video on that I've taken to doing shorts of late and um, yeah, I'm finding they, they yield good results. So uh, I hope you guys are enjoying them. Tell me, tell me in the comments what you what you think of the short videos I've been doing over, uh, uh, over the last while, if you've been watching them. And uh, yeah, if you have any insights in this car or any of my videos or anything like that, yeah, please do comment. Even if I don't always reply, I always, always read the comments. And uh, I take great pleasure in reading the comments, to be honest with you, um, most of the time. Oh, yeah, pretty much everybody has been very sound actually to be honest with you I've got a great bunch of followers coming up on 6,000 subscribers and I really get very very little abuse uh, so yeah um, but uh, yeah look and I think we're I think we're gonna leave it there folks um, really happy with this this is uh, this uh, job has uh, turned out fantastic it's uh, the car is driving great so um, yeah that is a very big box ticked so now next uh, next thing I'm going to do is get back to the MG because the bits I needed to finish that job are uh, are here now too and uh, yeah so look thanks for watching folks please do hit the subscribe button before you go if you haven't already and um, it does mean a lot to me and uh, yeah I shall um, see you in a future video thank you for watching